Tuk musician Wayne Willock describes the relationship between the landship and the Tuk band. The landship really existed first and the, the, the Tuk band became the engine of that ship to the extent that, okay, as we were here, now you would see when the land ship first coming on, you might hear a waltz being played. Right. The waltz as a slow beat will represent that the boat now move off. Right. And you're only hitting about 20 pounds of steam, <laughs> so the boat moving fairly slowly. Then you increase your steam, you pump up your steam to about 40 pounds. Mm. The 40 pounds of steam now will be represented by the fasi or the march, okay. cause now you're up, you're more up Step tempo. Up a bit. When you hit the rail tuck now, and you're up there, you're hitting 60 and 80 pounds of steam, mm. and the boat sailing. Like that is the ship. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the steam is, is, is what will be pushing the ship, and the ship, well, we call it a land ship. So the steam is what we really the call steam, the 440. Yeah, the 44 rail top is the, when you get into 80 pounds of steam, and the boat really tickling really and rocking. moving through the water. You know what I mean? So, but then what happened is, as there was, it became a time when the top band was so recognized that it became an entity in itself. That it wasn't just then the engine of the land ship. You had the land ship with the top, that's one entity. Then you, you could get that top by itself. The engine by itself. The engine by itself now, with the characters now, which would be reminiscent of the African heritage of these characters, because this character thing, the African thing. You have the Moko Jambi all through the Caribbean. You have the Mother Sally, which is the Dam Lorraine, is the what all sort of thing. You have the Shaggy Bear type of character, the Shags, covered face, all through the right. Uh, you have the donkey. I mean, this equestrian thing. This there was an African tribe that used to do this on, on a, a normal basis, but instead of using donkey, they had horse. Okay. But used to dress up the horses, and you know this pretty costume thing. So our thing about donkey is following that tradition, but we also have behind that. The whole steel donkey thing right. that used to hear was steel donkey right. coming down, so I move out the way and that sort of thing. And of course, the donkey was used to transport the cans mm -hmm. from the field to the factory, and that's how the economy was built. So there's a lot of things tied up together with these characters, you know. Um, most of those tunes were uh, mission songs, playing in the tempo that the flutemen uh, prefer to play in. Uh, this is this is not really known publicly, you know. In other words, people don't realize that the land ship never play banjo or anything. In fact, not the one my ship. Even now, we play all mission songs. Ify Wilkinson, another Tok percussionist, described the special dynamics of the Barbadian Tok rhythms. The basic fundamentals of playing is, and the kit of it is with two sticks. And we have a gentleman here that we can actually have a look at that briefly. And if you're looking at the six, uh, the feel of six are notes that are played equally with each hand. And then you identify a louder or softer note in order to help you also connect with the rhythm. So a good way of doing that is basically, um, we're going to start with the basis that I've showed you, which is the two simple notes for the six. And it's played right in the center of the drum. So this is up. what you get out of the six. If you look at it as a raw two sticks hitting the drum, this is what it looks like. Any variations you make from here help you to identify the rhythm as a unit. But that's basically having a, a, a listen to the six without using the drum as Barbadians do, because I, I want to stress this very carefully, that whilst these drums are played across the world, including the Caribbean, the only persons that plays these drums this way are Barbadians, hence the name Tukban from a Bajanian point of view, a Bajana point of view, however you want to put it. It's a local traditional thing that we have now developed and it's based upon these simple things. Now going to what we call the chime, so you get the difference in sound. All that's being done here is to move the stick from one location to another. It changes the tone, it gives you that unique Barbadian sound you'll find the elderly guys or the more traditional guys will tell you you're playing the kettle and you're playing the chime. The chime will turn out to be the ending of the drum. If you stop playing the chime, you're actually playing the same thing over and over. What identifies the differences in song is the moving of the stick from one point to the other. 
In accordance with modern tradition, the flute and penny whistle are the instruments of melody for the Tuk band. But other instruments are and have been used in this role as well. Among them the fiddle, the saxophone and the voice. It's only in the early 1900s the fiddle went out and the flute came in and it, it's not even a local flute for the most part is the English flute, right. uh, what we call the, the penny whistle, the C flute, the Clark flute. Um, some people here and other places would have been able then to get some bamboo right. and actually and create a, a wooden flute. Right. But the point is the flute had come in then. So you have that progression from singing with the tuck, to fiddle, to fiddle with the tuck, to flute with the tuck, and now Seaman got oh, sax with the tuck. <laughs> well, that's you know, and I just put tuck in my jar show. Oh, okay. So it's just traveling, you know, traveling, it's just traveling. the development. The music that was played was the same music that was played away from the landship. Yeah. One was singing, with a concert, and then they played instrumental. And I think that's how the instrumental aspect of Tukban evolved. Because in contemporary times, a lot of those guys didn't know the lyrics. And, and therefore, uh, you will see it. But what is interesting is if you read Attila the Hans book, where Attila talks about, uh, see him a little long brown girl calls you for me, uh, something which was burnt cane, had a piece of burnt cane and, and ground them ground and so they'll burn them down. Um, murder in the Market Murder and there was another one. There were four songs and I discovered a fifth one. But the fourth four songs that were popular in the 1900s, remember in those days melodies remained the same for donkey years. Right. It wasn't until the 20s that then you get, begin to get a variety of melodies. But what he was referring to, and, and he said it was too stiff for a Lego in the context of Trinidad. But you only have to look at contemporary use of the Tuk in terms of, let's say, Edwin Yarwood, whose, whose lyrics parallel the rhythm of, of, of the music. Not, not necessarily um, Punka because Punku was struggling against arrangers who arranged everything traditionally. Um, Punku, had to, Punku had to add in the tuck at the beginning or at the end, right? But the, 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 the contemporary things from the 94 begin to use tuck as an integral part of the whole music, the lyrics, the words, if you listen to them, the words had the cadence of the, the rhythms and so on, right? And I'm saying that if as early as 1900, the music penetrated Trinidad, it means the Tuk had a long an existence before that. Veteran Tuk musicians like John Hunt, known as Seaman, and Old Man Ho are good repositories of traditional Tuk band melodies. That is a, a favorite song that said, Mama and Papa were sailing one day Down by the cold river side Some of them turned to the boatman and said, Oh, oh May over the side, or oh, may over the side, boatman, or oh, may over the side. Someone out there just is waiting for me, so or oh, may over the sky. I had a gentleman by um, a store in town near T. Herbert. T. Herbert used to bring these flutes original. Um, at the time a flute, it cost 75 cents. They cut a Clark flute. Up to now they ain't got back the original flute yet that the top band used to play with. The original flute you said was a Clark? It's a Clark flute. But the trade the trade in making the flute, but the original flute. I had one home, home to show them, but I can't get the fun now. That is the flute that I used to make the top man ring. In, in the waltz, you would get the, the, the song Adam and Eve, which, which is the real authentic traditional right. waltz song. Banana, da, da, da. Right, correct. And then, as, 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 as Punko would say, you, you know, you, you build up to, you're building up to full right. steam, where you get medium steam, or the, or the fast, you know, you, you get a, another traditional song, we call it. 
the uh, the Caledonian, you know, right. So that is one of the traditional songs. And then with the, with the fast talk now, we have one or two songs. We have a song, you know, Burn Cane, Burn Cane. Like. Burn Cane. Mm -hmm. Then we have Granum Ground. These are the real traditional songs. Mm -hmm. And your favorite song that that is uh, that is uh, Suki. That's my favorite. I'm more recently now talk by rhythm. Talk by rhythm. Right, right, okay, right. Was there. That could go as a real traditional tap band song. So yes, there are there are a couple of traditional songs that we still, you know, incorporate in what we do. And I mean, I play a lot of like well, familiar songs of, of the present time, you know, waltz, classy, whatever, and tap band. Still make sure you know to keep the tradition as part of it. I, I the majority of times I always start with one of the traditional songs, whether it be the classy, the waltz, or the the four four the, the tap. In more recent times, their saxophone joined the list of Tuk melody makers. The Rose Hill Tuk Band is one of the groups that use the saxophone. Right now, the way we use the sax, you don't get as much, well, we in the North don't get as much flute as before. It's hard to get flute men in Barbados. You will get killed men and bass men, but not a flute man. Between, between the saxophone, between the flute and the saxophone, is a term different thinking all together. The flute carry six notes. But what you got to do with the flute, to get high notes, you got to cut the notes. Still, you could play not like the saxophone, you got to cut the notes with your finger. To get high notes. But the saxophone now, got on some notes on it, you got the high, high octave, you can make another high octave for yourself. Once you got the book and know what you're doing. The saxophone got high F sharp, you got high G, G sharp, but you got to know the finger to get it. 